Hello, welcome. This is Game Doubt Gamer. Welcome to the channel. Uh, interesting piece of computer history here I will be unboxing for you today. Uh, in here, hopefully, will be the Atari 850 interface. Now this was for their home computer line in the early 80s for their 8-bit computers. Now in, there is a modern uh, analogy to this device and that would be um, a USB hub with four serial ports and a printer port and a uh, daisy chain disk drive pass-through. So you could, you could, the Atari 8-bit line was the, really the only computer that I know of in the 80s computer line that had, which is the precursor to USB. So, uh, all the other computers back in the day had dedicated disk, well, most of them had, like, dedicated disk drive ports. But the Atari 8-bit line, let me, uh, take this receipt out. This, okay. Is a receipt in there. Okay, this is the original box. This is new, never opened, uh, brand well, like brand new or new in box, new old stock. Um, so here he's packaged the box. Awesome. So this is the original box. Now it's a pretty interesting device. Um, I, I'm I'm attached to it just because of my first computer. Here it is. So this is what it was mailed in this box. Um, so wow, let's just look it over. Look over the box here. This is because this box has not been opened. Look at this. It's it's 30 year old box or more than 30, more like 35. Because these were made in roughly 81, 82 time frame, 1981, 1982. Um, so I'm going to be opening this here. Let's look at the uh, the serial number here. Okay, serial number uh, 208217. I don't know what the 83HN is. 208217 EP104. There's a there's a less than 1% chance that that uh that this will be in a metal case, but most of them were in a beige uh beige plastic case. Here we are, Atari Inc, Sunnyvale, California. Additional Safe Transit Association. So USB was not developed until uh, 1996, or it wasn't released until 1996. They had the first draft in '94. All right, <laughs> let me just take a break. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid to open this. It has not been opened in 35 years, roughly. And um, gosh, I've, it almost feels like I should not be opening this. Here's the other side of the box. And here's the back. Gosh, and I, you know, I'm I, I love the old Atari 8-bit line. Uh, as you can see, it took a little bit of a crush here at one point. Not too bad. A little bit of a bump. These were uh, these were in high demand for people who wanted to use a dial-up modem or a printer on their Atari 8-bit. All right, so we've seen this side already. All right, let's restart. Alright, the, uh, these were in high demand. Atari really couldn't keep up with demand, so there were other uh, vendors. Let's go ahead and start opening. This hasn't been opened in... Oh, this is new, new old stock here. I'm, I really hate to open... <laughs> Can, do I have the balls to open this? <laughs> oh my. Package in the United States with certain foreign mage. There were other vendors making a serial interface, and this one was a little overkill. Something like this wasn't really, you know, this was the first sort of device like this. But the Atari 8 bit had a USB like interface it's called the Serial IO, like USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. Well, this is the serial, this is the standard that uh, USB was based off of, was the Atari 8 bit. Um, here it is. That's 35 years seal breaking. Wow. <laughs> this thing. 
there's thread, there's little threads in the, uh, there we go. Make sure I'm recording, yes. Wow. And so, you know, when I got my Amiga 500, oh, three or four years after my 8-bit, I was disappointed there was nothing like a serial bus. I think I opened it upside down here. Maybe we'll see. So it comes, here's the, here's the box. Or here's the, uh, sorry, the manual or whatever. It's got an operator's manual. And it's really quite thick. A lot of pages here just uh, copied. Xerox pages with a back shiny. This is copyright 1980 Atari. And this is, this is the only nice sheet of pa paper with uh, gloss to it. All these others just, uh, they ran a bunch of copies it looks like and stapled them together. Yep, so it has four serial ports. And kind of interesting, well here's the device. Wow, it's brown. <laughs> wow. But so awesome. Just the paper has brown, but th in theory the plastic should not have uh, yellowed or anything like that. It's kind of sealed in there. It may have. There's almost no way to check. Comes with a power supply. See if you guys can see the whole thing. Here's the serial cable. You would connect this cable between your computer and the 850 interface. Okay. Awesome. And then here's the power adapter. Let's go ahead and open this. I have to be careful about this. And I believe, yeah, I don't, yeah, this is a standard brand new, <laughs> yeah, well, it isn't brand new. And this power supply, I'm hesitant, it, it's probably okay, but now that power supply technology has improved so much uh, that I, I might be well advised to use a modern power supply for better voltage regulation. There's no way to tell in 35 years if this thing has got... Well, I could do a voltmeter. Um, so maybe that is something I can buy, a voltmeter, and, or some way to test how uh, stable and if the voltage coming out of this is the... I don't want to break the device. All right, so that's the power supply. It comes with a barrel. It's a barrel connector. Really awesome. And here's the, it's in foam, and it is upside down. That's okay. Two hundred eight one seven EP one hundred four. So, wow, wow, it's so beautiful. And if you know, I used this. The Atari was my computer for three and a half years. My primary computer. And uh, so I want to rebuild what I had because my, my, some of it went to my brother, uh, some of it I gave away and stuff. So I'm really kind of rebuilding what I had. And it would be nice to have that working again. Wow, there's not a... S <laughs> it's really beautiful. And I did pay a bit of a premium to get one. Not a whole, not a whole lot though. It was like, I paid like $40. <laughs> not that much. These, when they were new, they cost, uh, they were expensive. These things were over a hundred dollars. So I, st and, and considering inflation and everything, a hundred dollars back then is like 250 or 300 now. Wow. It's so beautiful. It is, this is, this is mint. This is absolutely mint. I don't want to get my, I don't want to get my grubby hands on it. All right, let's see what I can do. Like a paper towel or something. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I do have rubber gloves. Makes me look like I'm cleaning the bathroom or something. But I'm, I'm tempted. That bag is nice too. There is a smudge right here. So here on the back. There are four serial ports. This is the port one. Most most of your you really want to use port one. Port two and three have less handshaking involved for like modems. Like, um, let's see here. Um, but port four was interesting. This one you could 
uh, let's see if I'm, I'm reading someone's post on the internet. In the 80s, he says, you could connect a terminal unit hooked up to a ham radio uh, shortwave receiver and connected to the Atari 850 to receive the current news over the API news networks. So you could do this around the globe as long as you could get that signal. And signals bounce off the ionosphere high in the atmosphere. So you could get a signal out of the U.S. or some other country from many other places. And so also this has a printer. This is a printer interface. You'd have to... Yeah, printer. This is a, like a DB15. No, is it 15? Some, something like that. Port. You'd have to get a, a specific cable. But you can buy an adapter and solder your... You can make your own cable as well. So that's the printer port. Only one. It was kind of overkill. All Atari needed to do was have one serial port, like matching this one, port one, and a printer port, and they would have been fine. It does have a little smudge from the factory. I can wipe that with a wet thing. So here's the power switch, the power input. Here's the LED light on, and this is where you, you da daisy chain the serial uh, SIO cable through this. You, this one you could pick either one could go to the computer and the other one would go to your disk drives typically but you could even maybe have another serial interface <laughs> or printer interface off this I'm not sure anyway here's the underside wow so this would be the 1980s equivalent of a USB hub with four serial ports and a printer port like an old style print. Nowadays we have USB printers. But back then, and you still, most PCs have, uh, or many new PCs today, still have the serial and the old style uh, serial and printer ports on them. These DB, these DB9, uh, DB9 connectors, that's RS-232C, and that was developed in 1969. RS-232C. So long before PCs were around, the RS-232 interface was developed. Wow. It's beautiful. And I just love the, I love the, I love the logo, the Atari 850 right there. Let's see, get focused. So there's the Atari 850. And they were really reliable. It would have been nice to get a real a black one, because uh, but they didn't make many of the black ones. Only the very the very few first of these had a black metal case, brushed metal. Uh, like over ninety nine percent of them are just like this. Wow, <laughs> an SIO. There's like no dust. You you see these SIO ports today, you know, on eBay or you, anyone's computer and there's always dust in them. Here's the switch. Let's listen to the switch for the... I'll do it up close so we can hear it. Alright, let's listen to the switch. Awesome. <laughs> and you see how beautiful the Atari logo looks. R850 power plug two SIO or IO connectors it says but they're really a serial IO Port 4, port 3, port 2, 1. Awesome. Alright, well thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today or found it interesting.
You have a good one. Thanks for watching.